Hey folks, welcome back. Well, I thought I'd just bring you along and show you uh, this uh, new heavy-duty engine stand that I built. Uh, it took me about an hour and a half, well, maybe two hours, gathering up all the things I just had laying around. Uh, the only thing I had to do was buy the wheels, um, which I probably think I should have got a little bit bigger wheels. But anyways, uh, we got this engine right here. It's a used engine out of a... <clears throat> wrecked van and all that stuff and we're getting it uh all tore down so we can get all new parts reseal it everything like that it's going to go into this this uh pickup here it's a 7.3 power stroke and so i thought i'd be able, you know just uh show you basically uh you know kind of what we <laughs> what did i come up with um you know these are just various pieces of uh square tubing that um i had lying around and I don't use an engine stand that much. And I knew that my little Harbor Freight engine stand that, you know, was pretty much designed for, you know, like a 350 Chevy or something like that, wasn't going to hold this. Um, so this is what I came up with as far as the design. This is a uh, old hub bearing. Um, probably, probably, I think out of like a, you know, 2011-ish or so, I don't know, something like that um ford you know and then the brake rotor front brake rotor that uh um you know went with that <clears throat> deal here so you know i've got some spacers in between here a piece of angle iron got this piece here got it welded up you know really good and everything like that i don't know i just thought i'd show this uh and share this as a different idea as <laughs> for something to do um basically what we got right here is a uh pin with, with just a bolt you know it's a bolt that goes in because i got four uh studs in here i took out i got you know one missing here but there's just four regular lug studs that are inside of here um <clears throat> without the flywheel in here um well you can you know you can do it a couple different ways but i mean obviously i i built this particular bracket on the engine welded it all up and then removed it and then um you know put the lug nuts inside of of here tightened them down and then lifted the engine up and matched all my holes back up again um you know so i mean it you know it rotates and everything like that and i'll show you you know, I mean, it, this is a big, heavy engine. Um, obviously, it wants to, it's really top heavy, so it wants to just float down and do that. Um, so it's a little bit of a pain. Maybe someday if I were to end up using this so much, I can come up with uh, some kind of an idea, you know, using like a brake slack adjuster, or, you know, from a semi truck or something like that to, um, you know, go into here and make this thing you know or some kind of a gear i don't know but i'm gonna go ahead and just move it and show you um you know what i can what i can do with it um you know just to show you so basically i stick this uh big screwdriver in here and so i can move this back and forth and i can hold it and what we'll do is we'll just rotate this engine over this way let's just say if you were going to do you know the oil cooler or work on this side of the engine and we'll um i'll just show you how it's possible to do all right let's rotate this thing over uh, so i'll get this in here take a little bit of the slack off and it's going to want to rotate and it's going to want to fall so you just kind of want to catch it and guide it And put in there like so. Mm, all right, so now it's completely on its side, so you can do anything you want to work. Like when it comes time to do the oil cooler or something like that, it's a heck of a lot easier to uh, do that that way. So then we'll just rotate it back. There we 
go. So it's, um, is it perfect? Heck no. Does it work? Well, it seems to. Um, you know, and as of right now, uh, we've got enough room. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to put a starter on this thing and um, roll this thing over with a you know starter so I could do a compression check just to make sure that this engine has good compression before we build it all up. Um, you know, it's a used engine that's supposedly ran when it came uh, from what it used to be in. Uh, an E350 van, but, um, you know, there's other things that, that could possibly, you know, a person can design this a hell of a lot better in some other way, you know, because right now you can see it is leaning just a smidge, um, because it only has, I only have the choice between, you know, locking it here or locking it where it is. That's a big old space. So you could do more, you know, maybe you can put more holes in here as possible, you know, um, or do some other kind of deal. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways that this could um, be used uh, or made, you know, made to work a heck of a lot better than it is. The other thing, too, that I always had a vision when I was putting this together was um, maybe some kind of a bracket or something that, that can bolt on the front of here and then bolt up to like something like this to uh, have a little bit of support on the front because I eventually want to get uh, the other 7.3 power stroke that I've got that needs to be rebuilt. I would like to get it running on an engine stand because I'm going to put it in an older vehicle. Uh, I think an old Suburban is what we're going to put it in. Anyhow, those are projects. Well, when, when that project comes up, I will be doing that, you know. Um, so stay tuned for any of that kind of stuff. If you're interested in that, we're going to make uh, one of these 7.3s run on a standalone uh, system here, you know, with having everything that we need um, to make it work. And uh, anyways, yeah, we're going we're gonna to use this engine stand and stuff. So maybe something, you know, I mean, I guess you could run it the way it is, but it would be nice if you had something in the front that, uh, you know, pick it up just about an inch or so and have a bracket that's made to where it can come on and off so that you can pull it off and, and do your engine work, stick it back on, get everything all set up to uh, run this thing um, and, and make a standalone engine stand um, that's also maneuverable. So obviously we've got a big old huge mess. All of this stuff came off this engine because it was from an E350 van. So we're going to have to get this engine out. Most of all the parts, the external outside parts and whatnot are all going to come and get mounted onto this engine with the exception of things like a new water pump and this, that, and the other, but we're going to all new gaskets and everything like that. Not really going to be a big deal is that that's just random, random stuff. I'm not going to film any of that. Um, you know, I'm getting this pickup, uh, up and running. So that's the plan anyways, but yeah, I just thought I'd bring along and share, uh, this idea that it came up with. It's interesting that, uh, you know, this is the hub style like it is. I just found one that was a little bit better, but this, uh, I think it's four inch square tubing like this just barely fit in between there, you know, and we're able to get a really hot, you know, good, good welds on, on both sides of this deal. I don't see that going anywhere. We'll see, I guess. Um, you know, this seemed to weld it up pretty good. And, um, anyways, yeah, you know, right now there's, you know, this looks to be about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, maybe, I thought it got to be inch and a half, um, angle iron piece there. I mean, you can make this, you can go a little bit wider with your spacers or anything like that to do this. Um, but this is, I didn't want the spacers any more than I had to, um, and there's a lot of weight getting put down on this uh, particular deal. So I kind of wanted it to be an angle iron or a piece of tubing or something. Um, this is just what I had. But uh, 
it seems to work. You know, right now this engine will completely uh, rotate around without no hitting nothing or anything like that. Um, yeah, we can rotate this thing completely upside down um, to, uh, you know, I guess I could go ahead and, and uh, show you some measurements or something like that just uh, so you have an idea in case this would be something you'd kind of want to construct to make sure you had enough room to, uh, you know, height-wise. You know, I could have put this clear up here, but, you know, I knew from the fact that, you know, this engine will clear even with a turbo on and everything like that, it'll clear rotating around. So I guess maybe I can do that, show you that. All right, so the the tower here, from here about the, the center of it, you know, 25 inches or so. I mean, you can get, get by with even if the center was 24 or 26 or something like that. Um, basically how long it is from here to here, it's about a little over 42, 42 and a half, three quarters, um, width, you can do it any which way you want. I mean, obviously I, I could have gotten away with this probably being a little bit narrower, but I just, I was kind of actually kind of lazy about cutting that this piece of uh, square tubing which ends up being just shy of uh, 46 inches um, probably could have uh, the only thing I did screw up on that uh, I would um, you know do over again when this engine comes off of this stand is one we're gonna put bigger wheels on it but the other thing is is if you're gonna do swivel tires on one and and not swivel tires on or wheels on the other uh i assumed that this end would be just the heavy i don't know why but it's hanging off of this and so the the would do maneuverability would be better if these were the ones that don't swivel and these were the ones that swivel but i think i'm just going to go ahead and put all swivel tires on it um wheels i mean <laughs> tires um just it's harder to drive around that way but when moving it in any particular position, um, it's, yeah, it's easier, you know. I don't know. We're going to try that. I think that's the only thing I'm going to get a change on this thing. Um, it's kind of the same idea as this, you know. I, I built this about over 20 years ago when I was in high school. Um, you know, your, your pivot weight you know like these are these are uh non-swivel wheels and stuff like that here um which these are when i first built this those were swivels also and yeah it makes for moving this easier but when you're moving it this across the shop or doing something like that it's extremely hard to drive by yourself when all four swivel but you know what you can make it work anyways hopefully you thought this idea was somewhat cool or anything like that um if not that's fine um if you've got any other better ideas and i mean there, there's all oh, there could be hundreds of better ideas to come up with either to do this completely different or you know but this is just this stuff i had laying around and um you know i thought it worked pretty good so i thought i'd just share it anyways thanks for watching